Hi, my name is Tobio. I'm going to talk a little bit about comments in Python. So there are two types of comments in Python. There's this hash mark, right? And I can put a comment after the hash, some comment. And what this will do is prevent this line from executing. So if I hit run, we're not going to see any output over here in the terminal. If I, let's say I uncomment that, uh, of course this is not valid Python, some comment, so it's not going to execute. Now I can type in explicitly this hash, or if I'm on a Mac, I can hit command slash. If I have a, a comment that I want to run over multiple lines, then I can select all those lines, and if I'm on a Mac, I can hit command slash, and it will put hashes in front of all of these. So this is a quick way to comment out some code. Now, if you're on a PC or a Linux machine, the command would not be command slash, it would be control slash, control forward slash. So the other type of comment in Python is this triple quote comment. And this can take either uh, you know single quotes or it can take double quotes. The benefit of this, uh, we call these multi-line comments. The benefit is in the name. The benefit is that you can type over multiple lines. The new line character is invisible, right? So uh, we can look at the new line character right there. It's uh, not a character that's displayed by default in most text editors. Now, the interesting thing about these types of comments is these are also strings. You can declare a multi-line string uh, similarly. So some string, and we'll get this into uh, get into this in a later lesson. So I just want to demonstrate this really quick. You know, and if we print some string, we're going to get a syntax error. Oh, there we go. The new line character is invisible. We're just printing this string. Now, we use multi-line comments uh, for a couple different purposes. Uh, probably, probably the place that you'll see it the most is in what's called uh, function doc strings. So I'm going to just paste in some code for a doc string in Python. And what we can see about this function uh, it's named reverse a string. It takes some input string, and this doc string that's enclosed in triple quotes just describes what the function does, right? So it lists the parameters, input string, we can see input string up here, and uh, the type of that input string, which is a string, str, and what that string means, so the string to be reversed. And we can see uh, what we expect the function to return. Uh, it's supposed to return a an item called reverse string, which is of type string. And the description is, it's a reverse string. Pretty straightforward. And if I run this, we can see, indeed, this is a reverse string. So, uh, this is a use for multi-line comments, uh, doc strings in functions. It's pretty common. Now, in general though, why do we use comments? So, there are times where we might want to exclude some bit of code from running. And to give an example of this, I can just paste in something from the materials. So, x get seven, 
we're just assigning this value 7 to the variable x. And maybe we don't want to print the value of x. So if I run this, we're of course not going to see any output because we have commented out this print statement. Now, if I comment it back in, we can run this and it'll print x. So this can be very helpful when you're troubleshooting code. You might want to add print statements in so that you can find where there's a bug in your code. Uh, you might print a variable here or there, print some operation just to qualify your belief about what your code is doing. And those print statements, you might want to leave them in, but comment them out because they're part of your tool set of, uh, for diagnosis of issues with your code. So that's a big reason, excluding some code from running. Another reason, and this is a, something that you'll find as you get deeper into coding, you'll want to put a note to yourself to revise your code at a later time. So we often call those to-do statements. So here's a function called do something with and it takes some parameter. And then it alters that parameter. And then it returns the altered parameter. So maybe uh, to put this into a clearer context, let's assume that some parameter is a number. And I'm going to go ahead and call this. So print do something with 7. And of course, looking at this altered parameter is some parameter, 7, right? Plus 1. So we should see 8. And we do. Now, if I wanted to make a note to myself to modify this further, I could say to do change, um, let's say change function to return altered param plus 9. I don't have time to do that right now. I'm going to do it later when I read back through my code. So to-do statements are pretty common when you're developing code. You might want to refactor or rewrite your code to be more efficient, and you might put a to-do statement to come back through and refactor according to a different algorithm. This is a very simple example, but it's nice to leave notes for yourself when you're developing code. Now, another reason you might use a comment is to indicate to someone who's reading your code why you made a certain choice. And I'll just use the same function to give an example of that. So we're going to do something with some parameter. In this case, we're adding one to it. There's a general rule of thumb that you don't want to modify your argument. You don't want to modify the parameter or the thing that you pass into the function. In this case, we're passing in an integer. We can't actually modify it per se because it's an immutable type. But we're keeping a be best practice right here where we're copying that input parameter into a new variable called altered parameter. So we can modify altered parameter. And maybe to make this more explicit, I'll just say altered param is going to be incremented by 1. And I know you haven't seen this yet, but you'll see it soon. So I might want to make a note to a future reader of my code as to why I made this copy. So I can say copy so as not to modify the input parameter. This is a really simple example. It's best practice to not do this anyway, so I probably wouldn't communicate that to somebody, to somebody reading my code later. That said, there are times where you might write a complex algorithm and you might make a choice for computational reasons and your code might be hard to read. And in those cases, you might want to state why you made a certain choice. So something you don't want to do 
with comments in general is describe what your code is doing, right? So this is a sort of fine line. You might want to explain to a reader of your code why you made a certain choice, but you don't necessarily want to describe your code. So I'll give an example of what you don't want to do. You don't want to say copy some parameter to altered param, then increment altered param by one, then return altered param. So this might be readable, right? This might be readable in a non-formal language sort of way. But it's saying the exact same thing that your code is doing. And it's a better practice to write code that is readable than to describe what your code is doing and then write the code. It's redundant. It ends up uh, leaving you with a messy document. So try to avoid that sort of fine description of your code. Your code should speak for itself. That said, if you're going through someone else's document and you're making notes to yourself, by all means, put notes throughout your code that you're reading, and that will help you to learn. However, that's not code that you're going to share with somebody else.